Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The sixth month of violence doesn't show signs of dying down as a stabbing attack reported this morning in Jerusalem. Netanyahu says the common values between Israel and its European counterparts, as well as a common future, will bolster the West in the face of threats such as militant Islam. As part of an International Women's Day report, over the past two decades, there has been a dramatic rise in the number of women in Israel's workforce. The sixth month of violence doesn't show signs of dying down, as a stabbing attack was reported this morning in Jerusalem. Police said a Palestinian woman tried to stab border police officers in Jerusalem's old city, when the troops stationed at the scene responded by firing at the assailants. The police report noted that the attacker was killed at the scene and that no injuries were reported among the officers. Now in other news, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed Romanian President Klaus Werner Lohanis at his residence in Jerusalem, during which Netanyahu emphasized a strong historic bond between Jerusalem and Bucharest and noted that Romania is the only European country which consistently, in the past 67 years, held diplomatic relations with the Jewish state, adding that Israel seeks to increase its bilateral relations with Romania in a variety of areas. As a friend of Israel, you are a friend of Israel, uh, and uh, Israel is a friend of yours and of Romania. I uh, uh, noticed uh, when I looked at the notes uh, in preparation for this meeting, that Romania is the only country, the only European country that had uh, consistently uh, 67 years of diplomatic relations with Israel. So that's a powerful tradition. Uh, that tradition is buttressed by uh, a human bridge of uh, uh, people, Jews in Romania, who contributed to uh, Romanian life, and 400,000 Jews from Romania who made a tremendous contribution to Israel in every field, in every uh, aspect of our national life. We seek to increase our, uh, uh, our uh, bilateral uh, relations in uh, a variety of areas, and they're endless. They're in science and technology, they're in uh, uh, medicine and in uh, uh, water management, they're in defense and security, they're in cyber. Uh, they're in all areas of uh, technology and basically every aspect of our uh, of our activities, of, of our endeavors. Prime Minister Netanyahu also took the opportunity to thank the Romanian head of state for his battle against anti-Semitism, but noted that the new form of anti-Semitism was primarily directed at the Jewish state and warned that the slanders against the state of Israel can turn into unfortunate tragedies. Great slanders that were leveled at the Jewish people uh, were, are now leveled at the state of the Jewish people, at the state of Israel. Uh, Israel, which is a model democracy, not perfect, but uh, as good as any facing the challenges that uh, we are facing, uh, is being accused of, uh, uh, false, falsely accused of uh, uh, so many things. For example, there's going to be a Women's Rights Day, and Israel is going to be excoriated for its position on women by states that enslave women. Uh, this and the only country in the Middle East which gives uh, freedom, full, full uh, equal rights not only to women, minorities, gays, everyone. Uh, so there is an era, era of absurdity about it. But we have seen in the previous century that absurd slanders can uh, become uh, horrible tragedies. Netanyahu also said that common values between Israel and its European counterparts as well as a common future will bolster the West in the face of threats such as militant Islam. Threats that uh, go out from the Middle East and now cover the entire world. The threat of militant Islam under uh, the Shiite leadership of uh, Iran or the Sunni militant leadership of Daesh, uh, these are threatening uh, the entire world. When you look at the Middle East, there is one country, uh, a beacon of freedom, a beacon of democracy, of human rights, that protects not only itself, but by so doing protects everyone else, including Europe. It is this basic understanding that we wish to impart to uh, our European friends. I think many of them understand it. I'm sure you do too, uh, Mr. President. But it is the basis of our partnership, common values, a common uh, 
civilization and a common future. Now to another matter, according to a report by the Wall Street Journal, the United States administration is considering a United Nations Security Council resolution that would potentially serve as a blueprint for Israeli-Palestinian peace negotiations. The element, which has been historically vetoed by the United States in the Security Council, will be a significant element of a larger plan that would establish guidelines to a viable solution. The report offered a possible scenario in which the United States would push the Jewish state to hold construction of Israeli settlements on lands the Palestinians demand as part of their future state in any final solution, as well as Israeli recognition of East Jerusalem as the capital of a Palestinian state in return for Palestinian recognition of Israel as the nation-state of the Jewish people and an end to claims on a right of return for Palestinian refugees. The scenario would entail establishing two states based on the 1949 armistice line, with land swaps to reflect population changes since then. According to the report, Palestinian officials said they were open to an intervention by U.S. President Barack Obama. The report comes following a statement by the White House released yesterday, in which Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has declined an offer to meet with U.S. President Barack Obama at the White House later this month and cancelled a scheduled trip to Washington. Now, with regard to the Syria conflict, Russia announced it is willing to offer access to its military bases in Syria to help store and deliver humanitarian aid. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konashenkov said aid packages could be delivered and stored at its naval base in the port city of Taltus, and transport planes carrying aid could land at its air base in Latakia. Мы готовы оказать помощь в организации приема грузовых воздушных судов с гуманитарной помощью для сирийского населения с обеспечением их выгрузки и временного хранения на авиабазе КМИМИМ. Готовы выделить необходимое количество автотранспорта для перевозки и доставки гуманитарных грузов от порта Тартус и базы КМИМИМ в районы непосредственного распределения помощи среди нуждающихся лиц. He said the cessation of hostilities had made it possible for Russia to deliver humanitarian aid in some areas of Syria. В сирийских провинциях Хама, Хомс, Латакия, Дера, Дерезор, Алеппо и Дамаск нами уже доставлено и передано местному населению более 620 тонн гуманитарной помощи, медикаментов и предметов первой необходимости. On the 2nd of March, the Russian Defense Ministry prepared a list of areas where it believed the aid was needed urgently and sent it to the United Nations. Now back to Israel. In a special report released by the Taub Center for International Women's Day over the past two decades, there has been a dramatic rise in the number of women in Israel's workforce, and especially of mothers of small children. According to the report, the length of paid maternity leave for Israeli women and the amount of money that they receive is consistent or even slightly higher than in other OECD countries. The report noted, however, that paternity leave and the structure of paternity leave is not progressing as fast as in other industrialized countries. As a result, only 0.5% of fathers take paternity leave in contrast to fathers in other OECD countries in which about 16% of fathers take paternity leave. The report also states that about one-third of Israeli women are employed in part-time positions. Half of them stated that the reason behind that was that they have to take care of their children. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.